I've been uh, following a few bands that have come up recently in in sort of the the London music scene. Like, um, well, I, I'm not sure if it's exactly London, but that sort of area of Black Country, New Road, and Black Midi, and and, and people like that. Um, so uh, yeah, no, there definitely seems to be a a resurgence of, uh, of, of of some music like that that I'm really interested in. That's that's coming from the UK at the moment. Yeah. Have you been to London? To, um, I mean, I would have done when I used to live in England, but I mean, um, I, I left there when I was about six years old. So like, I don't don't remember it all too much. Um, just just a few memories here and there. But okay. yeah. So <laughs> you was born in the UK or where? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, all of my family is English. I was born uh, somewhere in West Yorkshire. I couldn't tell you specifically where it was. But yeah, pretty much all of my family is uh, is from from England, um, in, in just the Yorkshire area. So uh, yeah, yeah, got, got a lot of background there. Never actually been back. Um, I was yeah. supposed to last year, but um, obviously some some things got in the way. So I wasn't, wasn't able to make the trip over. Wow, okay. And yeah. so would you ever see yourself coming back to the UK or do you prefer it over there in um, New Zealand? Oh. Oh, I'd, I'd absolutely love to come back. Like I, I completely had plans to to do so last year. It's um, yeah, just just with the whole COVID thing, it, it completely stopped me in my tracks. Yeah, well, I mean, there's a lot going on here. Um, I haven't been to New Zealand, but you know, I I think I would love to go to that, a country like New Zealand. It just looks so kind of exotic compared to the UK. But yeah. um, what's the music scene like over there? In New Zealand, uh, the music scene over here it's um it's it's a bit kind of um strange you know like um it, it it seems like a country where the the biggest bands and everything usually only get attention inside of New Zealand once they're big outside of New Zealand I've kind of noticed right so it's 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 um uh, I, I, I can't maybe say this is true in all cases, but it seems like if somebody gets big overseas, then that's the only time the people in New Zealand will start paying attention to them and getting them radio plays and things like that. So it's almost like you have to prove yourself outside of the scene to make really? it in the scene, if that makes sense. Okay. Oh, wow. And would that be in countries like, prove yourself in countries like the UK and America or... Yeah, 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 definitely that sort of thing. But it's 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 not to say that the people in the scene aren't aren't really really helpful and nice here. You know, like um, everybody that I've interacted with is is super helpful and they point you in the right direction and things like that. But um, for for kind of bigger higher up uh, people in inside of our, our music industry, I feel like you have to prove yourself kind of outside of it for them to to take notice of you and things like that. It's um it's a bit a bit of a weird setup, but um. You know, I I still think that we have some 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 really cool things over here in our music scene. Yeah, for sure. Okay, all right. So I'm yeah. I'll kick off anyway. So I'm with uh, is it? It's Rory. Yes, Rory from Voodoo Blue. Um, and describe your band. Describe your type of music. Um, how you know? How would you describe it? All right. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm from from Voodoo Blue. Uh, I would say that we make um, music that is uh, it fits into the alternative and indie rock uh, kind of genre, I would believe. But there's a uh, strong focus on like mental health and, and mental health issues. I think the guys around my age uh, kind of face at the moment, you know, with New Zealand being one of the um, leading countries in 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 male teen suicide at some point in oh. in my career i kind of just decided that i think that i need to start making more songs that sort of fit into that category and can maybe help some people out when they're having some some rough times and things like that and um yeah i guess i guess that's kind of what we're all about at the end of the day is um i don't know just trying to trying to sp spread a positive message but within some some really good music Okay, I didn't know that about the uh, suicide rates in New Zealand. Wow, that's mm. it's it's so yeah, it's sad to hear. I mean, obviously, um, you know, in this country, there's a lot of um, suicide. You get that, but I think mm. it's whenever there's something with music involved, it seems like music. There's a lot more uh, depression and that kind of stuff when it comes to music. I don't know if you find that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think it, it maybe comes from the place of the artist, you know, like um, I, I usually tend to find that um, I find 
my best material and my my best inspiration in, in in my worst times or when I am feeling the worst. And you know, maybe that's why it does come through in the in the music scene. This this whole thing of of depression. I I don't know what it is. I have met many artists who who, who suffer from it dearly, um, but de depression and anxiety and things like mm -hmm. that. So um, it does does make sense that it that it feeds into the music there. But I guess I'm just trying to. Um, you know, no, knowing that I, I'm just trying to maybe make a audible journey of, of, of how I'm trying to personally pick myself back up and, and how I get through through some of the tough times of my life, if, if you get what I mean. Yeah, I mean, when I listen to your music, it does feel, how can I say it? It feels like it's, uh, it's funny to say it's therapeutic in a way, in the mm. sense that it's, it's, uh, how can I describe it? Obviously, it's mental and it's heavy. I mean, can you say it's um, heavy metal or? I, I believe it could be in 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 parts of it for sure. There's uh there's definitely parts of the album that we put out last year that I would I would put into the metal category. It can, it can get very heavy at times. Um, but then I I also like um, you know, being able to to pull it back and 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 have something that that is very soft sounding, but being able to transition between those parts seamlessly yeah. and. And just finding ways to pack as many different emotions into a song as as, as possible, you know, um, like uh, the the single that we're promoting at the moment, her name was human, has a lot to do with um, uh, Stockholm syndrome that I saw um, some of my friends going through at, at a certain point in their time, or, or something that I would refer to as that at least. It seemed like it from an outsider's perspective, and you know, kind of talking about the the angry sort of side of that being, you know um you know asking the question why aren't you helping yourself to then going into this this sadder feeling of of of, of this loss of hope and um you know no f feeling like you you need to give up on something you know so it's um yeah. i don't know i i it, it definitely can fit into the heavy category but um i i try to fit everything that i can in there all my different types of inspirations there are so it, it sounds almost as if like you're kind of battling some kind of depression or some kind of mental challenge in your music as well. I mean, the mm. way, especially I was listening to Aha, OK, OK, and that kind of rings a bell with me in terms of feeling really, you know, millions of things going through my mind. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, um, that was um, a song that was, yeah, the kind kind of written to to describe how you can you can push yourself out of your comfort zone in a way that's not necessarily healthy and in a, just a way that you would you know just do stupid things to get attention from yeah. people you know, that you're trying to impress and things like that. You know, I feel like we're all guilty of doing that at some point <laughs> in our lives. You know, yeah. like it's but good. um, it's um, you know, good to good to look back at it and and look at yourself from a different perspective and go, oh yeah, I do actually sometimes do these things and um maybe, maybe i don't don't need to actually do them i can just i can just be myself and if people don't like that then screw them good know? luck to them yeah exactly <laughs> exactly and i mean um so with all of that in mind i mean it's very i would be interested to know how do you keep yourself sane how do you i mean what's your happy place you know if you was to picture it and tell us Oh, my happy place it's um honestly my my happy place is the moment after i've i've finished a song that i just i i just feel such a strong emotional connection to you know there's there's obviously you know as a as an artist you go through and you find some songs you you, you try to write them and they just they don't turn out that great and so you're not that happy with them but then yep, there's just sure. these certain pure moments of just of just happiness that once once you're finished with something and you you hear that final note ring out when you're when you're playing it to yourself for the first time you just realize that you have something super super special there you know and um uh you know that 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 can take years to do in fact a, a song that i've um i've started um tracking for for our second album or or our next project at least uh that there's a a lyric in there um in, in fact a verse that was possibly one of my favorite things that i'd ever written and i wrote it probably three years before the actual song was created you know so it's just wow. sometimes you just um you just go back to things and you you, you yeah. complete this puzzle that you've been trying to figure out for so long and it's just 
the most relieving and an and awesome feeling in the world. Which song is that then? Uh, so that that's a song that hasn't actually come out yet. It will okay. it will be coming out um, at a later point in time. Uh, I'm Look I'm not entirely it. sure when yet, but uh, it'll be part of a bigger project for sure. Look forward to it definitely. Um, yeah. And in terms of inspiration, um, inspiration, what inspired you to get into music and to you know become the artist that that you are? Right. Well, if we're talking about right from the kind of beginning of it i guess my uh my mom and my dad are uh, were, were probably the people who got me most into into the music that i listened to originally you know my mom uh used to play uh the saxophone and my dad played drums in a band that used to uh, tour around england and things like that so um, yeah. i was very much already in a musical family but one of the first memories i have of of life is watching uh californication by the red hot chili peppers and i love Green that Day song Day that's Day one of my favorite songs yeah 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 it's an awesome song, <laughs> man. And the stuff. music video to go along with it is so cool like yeah i remember watching that when i was probably four or five years old and that's that's just like my first memory of life really like you know it's just yeah. um one of the first things i remembered and then um from there i started learning the guitar when i was about six years old and it's it's pretty mm. much all i've i've known how to do really you know um yeah that's that's where i would say my my first inspirations came from but um you know, later on down the track, it became a lot of other things outside of the rock genre, like uh, like a lot of folk music or or um, quite a lot of hip hop as well. So it's um, you know trying to trying to draw inspiration from wherever I can. So you would say you come from quite a musical family, then? Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's uh, yeah, mainly my mom and my dad. My sister is. Kind of the only one who who didn't get too much into music. She's uh she's much into a uh, EDM and uh, D and B and things like that. So we're oh, we're, wow. we're on two opposite sides of the spectrum there. Two so uh, yeah. I, I, can, I can appreciate what she listens to, but it's um it's very different to my normal. It's different, <laughs> but then again, a bit of drum and bass, hardcore D and B. It's kind of, I mean, you've kind of got that heavy pumping boom boom boom. You know exactly. Yeah, and you, you can you can find that in a, in a lot of in a lot of uh, metal music as well. You know that's that's why I I, I quite like listening to to heavy metal is just because of the, the the pure rage and just like yeah you know you know the tempo and it just it really gets you going so even though it's not um necessarily something i'd listen to all the time edm i i totally understand how that can make someone feel you know um yeah. it's it's um they, they they fit into the same category for sure yeah okay well and um in terms of uh your roadmap or what's what have you got planned for the future you know for the next couple of years where where do you want to see yourself as voodoo blue oh, um wow that's uh that's a good question i guess i just um you know uh, I, I mentioned my happy place before as being mm. after uh, i i kind of write songs and things like that but um you know second best to that is is just playing live and and, and playing in front of people you know um i know that we in new zealand are in a a lucky spot at the moment where we are able to have gigs and things like that go on yeah. so um it's been super fun to do that at the moment but um you know i'm just hoping that um over this year i'm going to be able to get get another album down and kind of just um you know J jacobus was very much me trying to pick up the pieces of of um uh, a friend that i lost in 2019 uh and this next i, I kind of just want to talk about this next chapter of okay now that i've kind of picked myself up a little bit what what can i actually um work on myself yeah. you know a, a lot of the songs i've written are from a sort of outsider's perspective picking at my own brain and seeing what i do and don't like about myself so um it's 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 been a very interesting time and i can't wait to get all of that sort of stuff recorded you know and i'm hoping for a lot more live streams you know yeah um but for um, people who maybe necessarily can't come to gigs and and, and more charity work um, from the uh, charity work that we did last wow. year at a few fundraiser gigs. So that should be good. Okay. Wow, that's amazing. So um, tell us a bit more about it. Is that for um, fundraising for a charity that you work with or? Uh, yeah, so it was um, basically because this whole um, album that we put out is obviously very much about mental health as i've mentioned and i felt that at the same time as putting it out i should also give something maybe back in the yeah. same space so we did two shows 
um, one in Wellington, which is our capital, and then also Auckland. Um, and the, all, all of the proceeds from that gig uh, went to Lifeline Aotearoa, which is a um, mental health uh, foundation that have a suicide hotline and provide free counseling and things like that. Uh, and we raised about $6,000 for them over those two charity gigs. So I'm, wow. I'm really hoping that I can work with them more in the future and, um, you know, give, give them the support that they need. Because, uh, yeah, as I said, New Zealand uh, has, a, has a big problem with this. And I just want to see, you know, how, how, how far I can take it and how much I can help. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Okay. And, um, yeah, well, as I said, any kind of work that I think helps with, you know, mental health. And, I mean... For me personally, you know, I've struggled with mental health in, in in the past, you know, in terms of, I think as men, I feel that it's a bit, you know, I can't obviously categorise it for every single person, but as a, as a man, I think the struggles are, it's just harder for us to show our emotions and to express our feelings. And so it's just, I tend to bottle things in more. And so this kind of me has been one of the big challenges over the years. So definitely I've always been, you know, open for any help really that can, you know, yeah. get you're, you're, ab there. you're absolutely right. And, um, you know, I, I've, I've definitely felt that myself in the past before, you know, just um, this, this feeling where you, where you feel like you have to hold it all in yourself. Yeah. And you have to, you have to fight those, those battles, but sometimes even just like, just, just talking to a mate about it, just yeah. like, even if they, you, you, you know, it can, it can just, it can help so much and just like, even if they don't give you advice or anything like that, just just knowing that they know as well can really comfort you in some yeah. in some bad times. So, you know, like learning learning to to communicate and 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 let out those feelings is something that's really really tricky, you know. And I still have 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 problems doing it myself sometimes. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm uh, I, you know that's that's also why I do the whole music thing so that I can I can let out those emotions as well. It's um yeah, it's, yeah. It, it is very strange. I mean. I love Marilyn Manson. People look at me and you you wouldn't think it, you know, obviously I'm into my R&B, my hip hop, my house music, but I, mm. I, I love all types and I love Marilyn Manson and I draw close um, resemblance between you and him. Is mm. that a good thing? Or... Um, I mean, <laughs> apart from the <laughs> allegations that have gone on against him at the moment. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, no, that no, might not be such a no, good no, 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 don't, don't, don't worry, don't worry. I would it, look to be completely honest. Like, um, even even though I've kind of stopped listening to it myself because of, of things that have happened at the moment, I just, um, you know, yeah. I, I, uh, I, I kind of just wanted to, to. Aside from all of the stuff that's been going on lately, I know. I mean, it's yeah. very, yeah. Um, I forgot about that as well, actually. But yeah, you're right. That's <laughs> yeah. very hard to, you know, kind of deal with and to find out that someone like him someone who i've admired yeah. you know and he's it's, it's just hard you know yeah I, f I feel the exact same he was he was one of my biggest inspirations for for such a long time like um the, in fact the band that i had before this was called lucifer gun and my my whole idea is that i was going to be called lucifer gun you know like <laughs> i was i was going for this i mean i i i'm very glad that i changed my band name now i don't, <laughs> I don't think it would have worked out too well as that but um no. you know that, that he, he was he was a huge inspiration to me you know and um uh the the, the music that he created was um you, you know even though it was very depressing it, it helped me out through it through a lot of stuff man like um, yeah. I, I, feel, I feel like he he worked a lot in the mental health space too even if he didn't necessarily say it outright yeah. you know um yeah um well how about there's another name i'll give to you and someone that i like as well prodigy have you heard of the prodigy yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I can't say I know too much about them. I've, I've, I've listened to the fat of the land uh, uh, yeah. heaps of times, too, too many times when I've been driving around in my car. But um, I've, I've heard about it. It's Keith Flint, isn't it? Who, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I believe I, I, so. I believe so. I'll have to double check that. Um, but it, yeah, Firestarter, or, you know, when I was a kid, sort of, yeah, I um, love that song. And then when I listen to your song, what um, it's the one called MMA. Um, yeah. I can kind of draw kind of a resemblance to that. And yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, 
that that that's awesome news. Yeah, Fire Starters a great <laughs> song, and yeah, 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 that that's <laughs> that's a that's a great comparison to have. Yeah, yeah the MMA is just one of those tracks that is it's it's so fun to play live, and it's it's um it, it seems like one that the crowd always always really get into and mosh around to. So that's <laughs> that's super fun to see. Brilliant. Well. Finally, um, to wrap up, obviously, I just want to ask you it's a question I always ask um, artists because it's important for you know other people, other aspiring musicians out there who want to get into the uh, field. What advice would you give to them? What would you, you know, say to somebody who's I'm looking to break out and make it as a as an artist? Oh, all right. Um, I would honestly just say that um never be too afraid to open up in your music um i, I know that it, it may sound simple to say that uh but yeah. uh it's it's something that i really struggled with for a while because you, you know when, when, when you're making music you're like oh what 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 sort of thing should it be what what kind of persona am i trying to make with my music and i found myself falling into this trap over and over again of going oh this isn't my band's sort of music you know this is yeah. this is something else but you, you've always just got to be true to yourself and, and and make whatever you want to whenever you want to um yeah. you know I, I feel like a even though my album is quite heavy i feel like um you know, it, it does it does switch genres a lot, and um, you know, it may, maybe every song isn't for everybody. But as long as you're creating what you think is right at the time, and and uh, just releasing yeah. what you feel as your you at your best, then I, I don't think you'll ever fail. I think it's a lot easier for independent artists to do that. I mean, mm. musicians who you know have big, who work under labels, big and record labels it's like it's more difficult because they have to follow a certain kind of you know image or yeah you know. absolutely and their record labels are expecting a certain kind of sound from them as yeah. well you know and they and if it's something different then it's like hold on what are you doing you're not yeah this this isn't what your fans signed up for but <laughs> yeah. at the end of the day like you are the artist you are the person putting out the yeah. music so it should be you who who gets to decide yeah. that first and not anybody yeah. else. that's why i'm always i've always been a big fan of independent artists and i always you know most of my collection are always independent because you know as you said yeah the sound is from the heart it's more you know it's mm. real um so okay well rory i mean Obviously, you're on Instagram. I'll put a link to all your socials here for people to check you out and find out more about you. And um, you said hopefully you've got some gigs sort of planned for later on or in the year. Yeah, or... yeah. So we we have a we have a festival uh, slot coming up uh, very soon in in Wellington for Cuba Duper. So that 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 should be fun. Uh, I think that's on the 27th of March that we have that coming up. Uh, and we're also flying down to the South Island of New Zealand uh, in April. So we're going to be doing some gigs down there. So that should be should be super fun. And we've also got yeah. some some more content coming out on our social medias to do with uh, live videos and things like that. So uh, yeah. uh, anybody who is unable to come to a gig can uh, see what we're like in a, in a live setting. Yeah, that's awesome. And I forget, did you guys, didn't you um, have the uh, COVID um, over there? Uh, yeah, 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 we did. We did. We went into lockdown uh, for, I think, a total of three months or something like that nationwide. Yeah. Um, but uh, we we had the level system like I, I, I believe you guys do over there, um, which uh, kind of kind of changes in and out. But we, we have yeah. had a few cases in recent times, but it seems to be dying down again. Now. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, we're yeah. just coming out of lockdown sort of within the next, we're in Obviously, we've been in lockdown since uh, January for, you know, three months now, and we've got about another month or so until restrictions start being lifted gradually. So yeah. it's going to be a good four or five months, you know, in total that we've been in lockdown for. But just can't wait now um, until yeah. it's finally over. I think, you know, May, June, May, June is when, you know, the proper restrictions ease. And so, yeah, it's going to be yeah. awesome, man. 
Yeah, absolutely. I um, yeah, I, I definitely acknowledge that New Zealand is in a lucky position, and I um, yeah. I, I really feel for the people who are stuck at stuck at home right now. It's um, it's you crazy. know, uh, even though I only spent a small amount of time in it, it's um, it's 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 not great not being able to to see everybody. So I really do feel for you it's over crazy, there, man. man. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's a hard time for sure. <laughs> Yeah, well, listen, Rory, it was great to meet you. And um, as I say, look forward to hearing more from you. Um, this probably won't be out until sort of the video won't be out until, you know, uh, sort of May time. But mm. either way, people are going to be able to see more about you, find out more about you. And yeah, thanks, dude, Absolutely. for taking time out of your busy, your um, schedule to chat, to, um, have a chat with me. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for having me on. This was a this was a great interview. I had a lot of fun.